Now that we know a little bit more about lists inside of Python, let's go ahead and talk about how can we access some of the inside parts of the list, right? Or maybe we would like to slice a section out. Let's see how we can do that inside of Python. So let's go ahead and dive right into it here. Inside of our code, uh, we have Python lessons, and then inside here, created a simple file here called accessing list items.y. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this here. I do have some notes for us to go ahead and, and fill in, type out here, but uh, accessing items in a, a list. So in Python, and really any programming language, lists are going to be zero-based. And we saw this with strings, right, where we could identify the string and grab the letter out. And so that just means that the first element in the list is considered the index of being zero. And then the second element inside of the list, that will be index number one and so on. So you can access these individual elements just by utilizing the square bracket notation that we're kind of used to with strings and we'll be able to retrieve the list item itself. And so there's positive indexing, there's negative indexing, and so we're gonna talk about both here. We're gonna start off with this right here. So let's go ahead and start typing this out here. For positive indexing, we have a simple list here called fruits, just like what we had earlier. And if we want to add the very first one here, apple, remember that indexes start with a zero base. And so we're going to go ahead and do the following. We're going to say, let's go ahead and print out fruit and then the square bracket notation and then zero. This is zero. This is the one position. This is two. And then this is three. So when we are trying to print these out here, notice that we have the square brackets. And then if we go ahead and save this and run it here, we get apple, all right? Now, what if we wanted to access banana? And again, we have to think to ourselves, this is in our human reality, this is the second position, but in computer programming, uh, this is the zero, this one's going to be the first index. So let's go ahead and print that one out as well. And so we'll just print fruits, one in the square bracket notation. Uh, we'll go ahead and save that and run it. And now we get apple and banana. So. Hopefully that is starting to make sense as far as the positive index goes. Now, what about negative indexing? So if we're gonna be talking about negative indexing, and feel free to utilize the same fruits that you have up here, but I'm just gonna scroll up here and add the following here just so that we can have it all in one spot so that way we're not going up and down and up and down trying to figure out what things are. So it's, it's the exact same fruits as above. And what if we wanted to access the last one here, the date? All we have to do is utilize the negative. Now you can't have a negative zero, right? But we can do something like this. We can say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and print out the last one by utilizing a minus sign. And again, if we want the cherry, we would do minus two. Now this one, again, it doesn't follow that rule of this, this is the zero position, but we're saying, hey, let's start at the end and go back one and grab it. Hey, let's start at the end here and grab the second one. So that's what this is saying. So just want you to be aware that we do have negative indexing. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that and run it and I get the date and cherry. Now, when we're talking about lists, a lot of times we're going to want to do what we call is slicing. Uh, slicing allows us to take a subsection of a list and tell it like a start point and an end point in order what to grab. And we saw this again with the strings and you can do the same thing with a list. So utilizing the same fruit one and we're gonna add one more to it here we're going to put in an elderberry and say we wanted to grab a list here and go all the way from the nana all the way to the date and there's a way to do that here by slicing the range and what we're looking at here is this is going to be the start point and then this is the end point so I want to start at the one position so that gives me banana 
and then I want to go all the way to the four. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, up to but not including is what we need to make sure that we understand with it. Okay, so this last one is up to but not including. That will give us the banana, cherry, and date. So let's go ahead and save that and run it. And I'm going to highlight this and run it just so we can see it up here. And so we do get the banana, we get the cherry, and we get the date. Now sometimes you want to omit either the start point or the ending point. So let's see what that looks like. Whenever we are trying to grab something here, right, where we want that slice to either start at the beginning of the list and you want to omit the end index, the slice goes all the way up to the last element that you specify. And we can do this, like I said, by omitting either the starting point or we can do it by the ending point. And if we take a look at the following, still utilizing that same fruit that we saw up there, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and run it. And notice that we get the apple, banana, and cherry. We are omitting the starting point because we're like, hey, we want to go ahead and grab whatever's at the beginning and we just want to grab all the way up to but not include the third element. Again, counting this, zero, one, two, three, all the way up to but not including. So that would be no different than putting a zero in here instead. So you can omit the zero. Let's look at what happens if we want to look at the grab the ending. So if we want to omit the end, it's going to go all the way to the very end. So I'll save this and then I'll run it. And notice that we get the cherry, date, and elderberry. So again, we're at the two and it goes all the way to the end. So zero, one, two, we start at the two and then we go all the way to the end because it's being omitted here. Right? So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to go over a little bit more in depth here by going over some advanced slicing. So you might want to pause the video, take a little break, but come back uh, because we're going to be instigating here a double colon instead of a single colon, right? So this is a single colon. We're going to implement a double colon that will uh, show you that we can do some advanced slicing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So with advanced slicing here, we're going to take advantage of the double colon. It may look a little different, a little unique, but I uh, have a little rule set here is uh, whatever the list name is, that's what you're going to start off with. We're going to have a start point as well as an end point, and then we're going to have the following here, which is the step. So notice that there, we now have an additional colon here that we're going to be utilizing. A real simple example of this would be, let's go ahead and create a list of numbers from zero all the way to nine. So zero all the way to nine. And let's go ahead and show an example of a slice utilizing this with a start point and end point, but then we're going to be able to skip indexes here. So let's show you what that looks like here. So we can go ahead and utilize this. Notice that we're starting at the one position, right? So omitting the zero. We're going all the way up to, but not including, right? The eighth position. And then we want to move over to each time. And that's what we're getting at here. So we're starting here with the one, and then we're moving over one, two, each time we're going through the loop here of the list in order to print things out, right? So let's go ahead and show you, if we go ahead and save it, I'm gonna highlight this and run it. And now we get the one, three, five, seven. Remember, up to but not including uh, that eighth index. Now, if you ever find yourself in a case where you need to reverse order, sometimes you get information from a database or an API call, uh, you're going to want to take advantage of maybe reverse ordering something, right? And you get an array that's in a different order and you'd like to go ahead and reverse that order. So the way to go about that would be the following. So let's go ahead and put in here some notes. 
So if we want to reverse a list, uh, you can reverse a list by utilizing a negative step value. And if we're wanting to reverse an entire list, this is what it would look like. So we would go ahead and do numbers, and then we would do the following. We put those two semicolons there, and then we want to step backwards. So that's where that comes from. So that might be something that you may want to put in your toolbox, in your note box here, uh, whenever we're needing to resort, go in reverse order. This would be a way to go about that. So again, I can go ahead and save this and run it here. So let me go ahead and highlight all this and run it. And now we get the 9876543210. All right, hopefully you ended up enjoying this lesson here. Like I said, we're gonna have a few challenges that will test your knowledge on some of these accessing data, as well as manipulating it or even reversing it. So we'll see you in the next video.